China's third aircraft carrier, the Fujian, may soon be on the move. As per the latest satellite imagery, the new warship, which China has designated a Type 003, appeared to move from the key side of a Shanghai shipyard on November 19th, indicating preparations for its impending maiden sea trials. Viewers may note that on the 17th of June 2022, China launched its third and most advanced aircraft carrier to date. The 80,000-ton giant was christened with a bottle of champagne amid plumes of colorful smoke, multicolored streamers, and water jets before mooring at its pier in China State Shipbuilding's Jinyan Shipyard in Shanghai in celebration of a milestone in the country's ambitions to modernize its military. The rapid progress of the Chinese Navy is undeniable, and although the Fujian signifies a noteworthy enhancement in Chinese naval capabilities, it is not without noticeable issues. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why China's Type 003 Fujian aircraft carrier is not a worthy competitor for Ford supercarriers. Let's get started. Before we proceed, a word on NordVPN, which is one of the most trusted VPN brands worldwide that has a no-log policy validated by Deloitte, an industry-leading Big Four auditing firm. NordVPN provides an encrypted tunnel that protects your privacy by preventing external entry to your internet traffic, as well as enabling you to access content that's blocked based on geolocation. Best of all, with one NordVPN account, you can secure up to six devices at the same time. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal with massive savings by going to nordvpn.com slash defense or clicking the link in the description. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. For over a decade, China's been steadily building up plans to deploy six aircraft carriers. The plan also made provisions so that the carriers are of progressively higher capability. China's first carrier, the Type 001 Liaoning, is actually an old Soviet-era Kuznetsov-class carrier. The second carrier, Shandong, launched in 2017, designated the Type 002 at its commissioning ceremony, was China's first entirely domestically built carrier. It's essentially a copy of Type 001 with very small improvements. China's third carrier, Fujian, is significantly larger and more capable, but is not perfect. Here are four major problems in the carrier. Like Shandong, Fujian is built with domestically produced steel. The strength of the steel is not sufficient for the construction of an aircraft carrier. Over the years, Shandong has seen many hull breaches which has led to water flooding. The carrier has spent a huge portion of its service life in shipyard for repairs. The situation is identical for Fujian, and it's already shown signs of the same problem. Interestingly, the Soviet-built Type 001 Liaoning is actually the one that's operable, since the hull is not leaky. On Friday, June 18th, 2021, the USS Gerald R. Ford successfully completed the first scheduled explosive event as part of Full Ship Shock Trials FSST. The U.S. military detonated a 20-ton or 40,000-pound bomb next to the new supercarrier. The explosion was so powerful that it registered 3.9 on the Richter scale. The blast is comparable to 100 modern depth charges exploding simultaneously. Ford successfully completed the third and final scheduled explosive event for full ship shock trials on August 8, 2021. During the four-month testing evolution, the aircraft carrier withstood the impact of three underwater explosions released at distances progressively closer to the warship. Captain Paul Lanzalotta, Ford's commanding officer, had said, We had zero catastrophic failures on the ship zero situations where we had flooding, zero fires. Unlike the Ford and Nimitz carriers, Fujian is not nuclear-powered. This means that its speed, 
endurance, and long-ranged operational capabilities would still be limited. It'll be heavily dependent on support ships to undertake major missions. Fujian steam turbines need 12 hours to reach the power required to move the carrier, and hence, if caught off guard, it will be a sitting duck. The heart of any American aircraft carrier is the nuclear reactors which provide the required power. The Ford class has two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors. Each one of these is capable of producing 300 megawatts of electricity, triple the 100 megawatts of each Nimitz class vessel. Not only does this enable practically unlimited range and endurance, but the huge power supply also provides the setup required for future expansions, like inducting lasers. Ford class uses Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMAILS, instead of a steam catapult, the first to do so. The system uses a linear induction motor with an electric current to generate a magnetic field. That field then propels a carriage down a track. Since the power delivery is linear, it reduces stress on an airframe and also has less maintenance requirement. This will also be more suitable for launching next-generation fighters as well as drones. However, Emails is not easy to design and install. Emails motor generator, which is part of a suite of equipment called the Energy Storage Subsystem, weighs over 80,000 pounds alone. The Energy Storage Subsystem also includes the generator control tower and the stored energy exciter power supply. The Gerald R. Ford class carriers require 12 such suites. The power supply requirement is also massive. Emails in Ford class is designed to deliver up to 60 megajoules of electricity and 60 megawatts at its peak in the three seconds it takes to launch a Navy aircraft. This amount of power could handle about 12,000 homes. Fujian is deploying emails, but as evident, the technology is very complex and not best suited for a non-nuclear powered carrier. This has caused delays and is thought to be not properly working even now. Also, emails was not in the initial plan and was added later. This has created major design complications like excessively long flight deck and flame deflectors blocking the runways. This will hinder the sortie rate, which is crucial for combat effectiveness. Ford is expected to achieve a 33% increase in sortie generation, 160 sorties per day under normal conditions, and 270 during wartime. American supercarriers can carry a flight group of more than 70 fixed-wing aircraft including F-A-18 Super Hornet, EA-18G Growler, Northrop Grumman's E-2C Hawkeye, as well as rotary aircraft like Sikorsky MH-6. American carriers are also on the way to deploying next-generation platforms like the fifth-generation F-35C stealth fighter jets, as well as MQ-25 Stingray unmanned aerial tankers. While China is making progress, doesn't have such a well-balanced air fleet for its carriers. For example, the J-15 Flying Shark, which is a derivative or illegal copy of the Russian Su-33, is referred to as a flopping fish by Chinese media itself for its inability to operate effectively from the Chinese carriers because of low engine power output. China's working on a stealthy fighter designated as J-31 for its carriers but it still has a long way to go before it can be inducted. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.